Why? Hello and welcome everybody. Hey, it is Pox again. So today I want to go ahead and let you guys know on my strategy that I'm going to use uh, to kind of level up my character past level 95. Uh, and the only reason why I'm making this video is mainly because leveling has gotten quite a bit more difficult. By difficult, I just mean more tedious with, uh, you know, the EXP changes that GG has been doing as time goes on. And more importantly, map sustaining has been a bit difficult for players. So I just want to let you guys know what I personally uh, am going to go ahead and do. So I have created some like Atlas guides and strategies. So if you're curious on stuff like that, you can go look at the previous videos on the channel. Uh, and also this is not going to encompass any gameplay. I'm just going to be speaking. So um, for those of you guys who have been following what I've been doing, I pretty much have been buying out a shit ton of torture chambers. Um, and I know obviously map sustain and buying maps are two different things, but I buy out a ton of torture chambers mainly because I honestly don't mind the layout now after running like 200 or so. Um, it's a really easy boss for me and it costs like three to two chaos on PoE trade. So paying two to three chaos for a tier 12 map that nets you back so much more currency is phenomenal. So from running torture chambers, I have now stocked up 26 shaped bone crypts, 13 shaped infested valleys, um, and 38 shaped toxic sewers. So the method that we're going to go ahead and use is I'm actually going to go clear this dark forest since I can just go buy a dark forest map just to get the shapers orb from here. Um, this shapers orb right here is going to go on our waterways or sorry, our waste pool, which is going to make it a tier 14. And then I'm actually going to remove my torture chamber from my Atlas. The reason why I'm going to remove this from my Atlas is because I've been building up a, a stockpile of shaped maps. And the reason why I haven't really been running my shaped maps is because I have a regular tier 12, which is torture chamber, which I use to build my Atlas pool. But if I keep this here, then I'm rolling a 50% chance at tier 12 to become either a bone crypt or a torture chamber. If I get a torture chamber and I don't unshape it, the problem with it is that since it's adjacent to, let's see, what is torture chamber adjacent to? It's kind of like weird with the elder influence, but it's adjacent to waterways, which is a tier 11 and malformation, which is a tier 13, but we don't want malformation waterways or torture chamber because we just want to continue those shape maps. And the reason why is it helps us with our map sustain. Uh, if you guys are familiar with the most recent change that, you know, GDG did, they made it. So maps that are adjacent to, um, the following map that you do not have unlocked, have a increased chance at dropping. And you can tell it's really obvious because if you just look at my mapping pool, you'll notice I have 14 waterways, which is a tier 11 map because it's adjacent to torture chamber. I mean, I've had like 30 plus of these, uh, easily 40, 50, I've been selling them. And the same thing with malformation, which is a tier 13 map. I actually have been selling them two for five C each. You can see they're listed here. Um, and that's actually really good because for us, it nets us a bunch of currency that we end up selling off so we can continue our shape strategy. Now, the amount of maps I have here should easily push me past 95 to 96. Um, come on, Mini K, you want to come up? Come on, buddy. This is the uh, face of Beastery League right here, boys. Make sure you guys uh, pay attention right here. Uh, but yeah, so that's pretty much the method that we're going to use, and um, I'm pretty much set to go. Also, for like League updates, if you guys are curious for what's going to be happening, um, actually, I guess one, one more thing to kind of go into a bit more detail, uh, just to kind of say it again. So we have a, almost like 40 tier 10 toxic sewers. I know it's a tier 10 map, but we run it so fast. Uh, we're going to pull the elder and shaper influence around. You can see I have it on mud geyser right here. Uh, I think I'm just going to like loop it around like to here and here maybe. I'll see. Or I have to drag it around from the complete opposite side. But tier 10 supplies my tier 11 pool. Tier 11 pool supplies my tier 12 pool. Tier 12 pool helps supply the tier 13, but more importantly, the tier 12 and the tier 13 can also supply our tier 14, which is going to be our waste pool, which is the same exact layout as toxic sewers. So I'm pretty happy for that. All right, now for some league updates on what's been happening with the character. Uh, I've been pretty much spending all my currency that I find on gear upgrades, but of course gear upgrades are pretty difficult to come by. Um, so some things that I kind of noticed, there's actually a really cool beast crafting recipe that allows you to corrupt your piece of gear, but go up 10% higher on the quality. That's really good for things like Sintrek, which have a crazy high flat energy shield roll. If you actually look at the roll on Sintrek, it rolls up to 160 flat energy shield. It's not even in a tier bracket because it's a unique mod. Uh, also for people who are curious about this, in your settings, if you go and look, there was an update recently. There should be a, I don't know exactly what it's called here, show advanced mod descriptions. If you have this enabled or enable it and you hold alt, you can see all of the extra mods that you see here. Um, yeah, so I bought a second Heretic's Veil, 
Uh, I gave it to my buddy over here, uh, Ector. Shout out if you need any crafts. He's all Masters 8. He does it every league. And he's actually Uber in He's doing Uber Lab enchanting our Heretics Veil, our second one. Uh, hopefully we can get a Despair enchant in the next couple days. And then once he gets that, I'm giving him 50 chaos for basically the fee. And then the next thing I'm going to go ahead and do is I have another pair of Syntrex here, which are crazy good rolled. These are 158, mine are 154, and they have 30 intelligence, mine have 22, which means I get 8 extra flat intel. Uh, 8 intel is almost equivalent to 2% ES, so that's super good. Uh, and then we get a little bit higher dex, which means that I can level Vol Grace up, I think, one or two more times. And phase run. Uh, but the phase run is just for like running masters and stuff, so you don't really have to worry about that. Uh, and then we're going to do the Beastcraft recipe to slam this to 30%. The only reason we haven't done that is because we're going to get a different Implicit. This Implicit doesn't really matter. Um, I'm not really sure what I'm going to get. I mean, they're going to get the attack speed, cast speed if you've killed recently. Uh, the regeneration, because that'll make it so I can never run out of mana on bosses. And the last one would be... What's the last one that you can get? Movement speed. There's a 10% movement speed Uber Lab enchant I may get for the boots as well. Uh, I haven't even bothered doing anything for my Alepathies. I don't think I'm going to... I don't really care about Uber Labs, so I mean, we'll see. I uh, still have to upgrade the accessories all around the board. Uh, same thing with the shield and stuff. Our Enlighten is almost level 3. That's how much we've been playing, which I guess is not too much for some people. But for me, that's a lot. So I'm excited to knock out this Enlighten 3 because it'll just give us a little bit extra mana. Uh, hopefully, it'll bump us to like 70 or so. And the reason why that's good is because... My Wither Totem costs 24, which is like half my mana pool. My Rallying Cry costs 37, which is more than half of my mana pool. Uh, and we want to make sure that like we can Rallying Cry and put down our Wither Totem as soon as we can. Uh, so that'll just be like a nice little quality of life touch. Uh, I don't really know what else I'm going to do necessarily for the character. This Heretic's Veil upgrade is probably the main thing. After that, it's going to be like really fucking niche trying to upgrade all of these other jewels. Like replacing this with, a, with just a damage all res jewel and... Um, replacing i probably don't really need to have two spreading rots but i'll remove one spreading rot later and keep one of them i just have to get really good jewels that can actually allow me to replace those um so i'm not really too sure what we're doing with that um yeah for other characters i know people have been asking me a bit about them we do have that summoner that i made uh, i haven't really done much with it he's kind of just chilling at level 61 um it's pretty fun i'm just you know i'm just having a lot of fun with my other character i also want to make a golem mancer because i tried playing a fire golem mancer before and it was okay. I didn't like it that much, mainly because of minion AI. And I still think I'm going to have the same issue with minion AI. But since there's like, since Elementalist got reworked and it's really cool for golems now, like in terms of just raw damage and getting an extra golem, I want to play a golem summoner and then my zombie summoner uh, and still figure out exactly what I'm doing with him, Mr. Baron or Miss Baron. But I want to play them side by side and see kind of which play style I really enjoy more, whether I go for like golems uh and specters or i don't even know actually what i'm doing with that golem build but anyway that's another build for the future and then i was also thinking that i've been meaning to play arc for a long time i made that arc miner a long time ago in breach league and i was supposed to make a couple other ones and i just never really got into making another arc miner um instead of making arc mine i think i might try like either dual void battery or uh dual shimmer on i think shimmer on arc mine hierophant totem like crit arc mine not mine crit totem uh, fuck i keep saying arc mine crit arc totems there we go uh but i don't know Th this is all just you know hypothetical things right now i think the most important thing is to continue playing my uh level 95 character mainly because i'm just i'm having a lot of fun on the character and if you're having a lot of fun and you're running red maps you're probably making a lot of currency and there's never anything wrong with having 2,400 jewelers and 300 freezings and 1,500 chromatics, right? It's just, it's all good because whenever you decide to make your next character, you're kind of all set. Uh, also, one thing to touch up on, uh, I spoke about this before as well, but sextants are really fucking good this league. Um, I don't use them on my torture chamber, but I use them over here on my underground sea. You get a white sextant here, a yellow sextant here. Uh, same thing with the bone crypt, yellow sextant, yellow sextant. For toxic sewers, you get white sextant, yellow sextant, since I can only do two. Um, part of the reason, again, I haven't run my Infested Valley yet is because I have to pull Elder all the way kind of like over here, which isn't that bad of an issue. Uh, I just kind of have to chase him like here to here. Actually, would there be an easier way? It'd be easier to go through here, but fuck that. So we'll just go like fields into Spider Lair, into Jungle Valley, into like maybe Coral Ruins, and then like Arachnid Nest. I have to see exactly like the best way to make Elder stay because i've had a few instant well i mean he stayed for the most part but i accidentally chopped off like 20 elder maps at one point i had this whole thing like set down here 
I think if you guys saw in the previous one. And then I ran like one map and Shaper took over this vault map here and it just cut like all of this off. Anyway, that's pretty much about it. Um, I don't think we found anything too crazy. I guess I can go through my finds here. Let's see if we found anything too cool. Um, what did I find here? I think there was like Pokemon shop. Did I look in this one? Oh yeah, I thought this staff was really good. Um, 40% lightning damage, 32 cast speed, critical strike chance for spells, chance to gain a power charge on crit, and then you can also still prefix like flat damage to spells. Um, so like lightning damage to spells would be pretty cool. I find I thought I found like some other pretty good stuff too. I don't know where I put it. Oh yeah, we got stat sticks here. I know people like these for item level 80 plus. Um, might have to... Nobody saw that. There we go. I have a brick tabula here. Oh yeah, I rolled this one here. ADC is probably too expensive, but this is pretty good, right? 95 life, decent tri res, 800 evasion. Feels amazing, man. Anyway, that's pretty much going to be it. Just wanted to give you guys some leak updates. Hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. Uh, if you did, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And remember, you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash pox. Hope you guys had a wonderful time. And uh, Mini K over here, who is the face of Beastery League, he said goodbye. Mini K, are you falling asleep? Dude, he's falling asleep. Wait, what are you doing? Mini K, wait, what are you doing, Mini K? You just want to go to bed? He just wants to go to bed. You're like a potato. Do you know that? Why do you want to sleep like that? That can't be comfortable. <laughs> this is what he wants, man. He just wants to be on my arm. Here you go. What? How did that even happen? Oh, there we go. All right, boys. Anyway, I'm out. Hope you guys had a wonderful time. I'll see you guys all tomorrow. Take care, everybody.